Come on in, guys. Welcome to Idled Out, where we talk all things Survivor. My name is Luke, and today we're examining Boston Rob Mariano's gameplay, specifically his five best moves ever, across his whopping five times playing Survivor. This will hopefully be the start of a new series, where we can celebrate the greatest and most legendary plays of some of Survivor's greatest and most legendary players. And in the interest of fairness, we'll also talk about those legends' single worst moves in their Survivor careers, too. Hey, nobody's perfect. And what better way to kick off the series than with Boston Rob, a five-time Survivor player and one-time giant statue whose only rival for face of the franchise is Jeff Probst himself. Known for his charismatic confessionals, romance with Amber Burkich, and mafia-esque control of almost every tribe he's been on, Boston Rob's undeniably one of the most popular and polarizing figures in Survivor history. And, uh, he's made some pretty crazy moves in the game, too. From literally carrying his family on his back to proposing to the winner of his season at the reunion, what makes the cut and what doesn't? From season 4 to season 40, let's count down Boston Rob's five best moves and single worst move ever. Boston Rob's fifth best move is instigating a fight between Big Tom and Rupert at the final five of Survivor All-Stars, one of the only times in All-Stars where Rob was really in any immediate danger at all. At the final five of All-Stars, there are three factions, Rob and Amber, Jenna and Rupert, and Big Tom all by his lonesome. And uh, everyone thinks they're going to the end with Rob and Amber. But Rupert and Jenna put their heads together and realize that Rob's kinda running away with this whole thing. So they plot to team up with Big Tom to take him out. When we do, we go bust him up, okay? Right, we go, we go bust him up. We go. Usually you wait until after your target is out of earshot to scheme against them, but Jenna was on Pagong, so we'll cut her a break. As Rob and Amber suck face, Rupert sucks up to Big Tom and gets him to seriously consider flipping against Rob. But Rob starts up some good old fashioned schoolyard drama to pit Rupert and Tom against each other. First fake tattling to Tom that Rupert said that Tom said that he wants to vote Rob out. Then Rob puts the two together, lights the fuse, and just backs away like Homer Simpson into some hedges. Of course, it's all a moot point anyway, since Rob wins immunity, but this was a pivotal vote for Romber, one of the only times when their chokehold on the tribe was threatened, and Rob save himself and his boo by instigating a petty fight between two men in their 40s. Boston Rob's fourth best move in his Survivor career is one of his earliest moves ever, blindsiding Hunter on day 9 of Survivor Marquesas. Early on at Mara Amu, it became clear that Hunter Ellis, with his rugged good looks and Johnny Bravo jawline, was the leader of the tribe. In fact, if you were going to make a stereotypical Survivor tribe leader in a laboratory, it would literally be this guy. Even his name and occupation are obnoxiously leadery. After their episode 3 immunity loss, Hunter's targeting Sean or Sarah or whoever else he perceives as lazy or not pulling their own weight, and discusses who should go home with Rob. But little did Hunter know that in confessional, Rob was quoting the Godfather and laying out his whole strategy of eliminating anyone who could rival him for total control of the tribe. Which, as we'll see later, will kind of become his whole shtick. Fear, basically, it's a tough principle. But fear keeps people loyal. If they're afraid they have something to lose, then they'll do what they tell you to do. That's straight out of the Godfather. It's true. At Tribal Council, Rob, Sean, Vesepia, and Sarah vote out Hunter, giving Rob a stronger grip on Mara Amu and showing that no one, no matter how chiseled a jawline, no matter how rugged of good looks, is safe when you're on a tribe with Boston Rob. Boston Rob's third best move is voting out Matt for the second time on Survivor Redemption Island. This was recently seen on this channel as one of the most cold-blooded moves in history, and cold it is. Rob and his Ometepe minions took out Matty second in Redemption Island, literally because he shook hands with Zapatera after the challenge. But Matt clawed his way back into the game, winning duel after duel to re-enter the game at the merge. Matt instantly becomes Belle of the Ball at the Merlonio tribe, being wooed by both Ometepe and Zapatera to join their ranks. Matt's a man of faith, though, and figures that God, like everyone else, 
hates Zapatera. So he decides to stay true to the Ometepe tribe that callously voted him out just a few weeks prior. But before making that commitment, Matt foolishly fesses up to Rob that he was considering joining Zapatera to vote him out. Rob pounces on the opportunity to make an example out of Matt and shows the rest of Ometepe what happens when you even consider flipping and sends Matt home just two days after he came back into the game. No move better exemplifies Rob's use of fear to keep his allies in check, and it worked like a charm, keeping the rest of Ometepe loyal down the stretch, with a little help from his second best move ever. Boston Rob's second best move ever was implementing the buddy system in Survivor Redemption Island. At the final 11 of Redemption Island, with Matty fresh out of the game for a second time, Ometepe has a 6-5 lead over Zapatera, and the only thing keeping Rob from total tribal domination would be people talking to each other, looking at each other, gesturing towards each other, or otherwise communicating in any way. So he implements a strategy that you'd think would be a bit excessive on a fourth grade playground, let alone in Survivor. The buddy system, wherein no one from Ometepe can go talk to anyone from Zapatera unless they bring along a buddy, thus limiting the amount of game talk that can happen to roughly zero. I have a whole vision that I'm trying to put into action here, keeping us versus them mentality. Thus the separate shelters, the separate eating times, I want my group to hate Zapatera. An utterly draconian set of rules and a really unfun way to play the game. And yet, Ometepe went along with this until every single Zapatera player was eliminated from the game. This is where four seasons of Rob progressively exerting more and more control on his tribe culminated. I don't think a single person in Survivor history has ever had more control over a tribe than Boston Rob did right here. Now, it can be argued that most of Ometepe were total sheep and potentially the only group of people in history this would ever work on. And that's partially true. But still, Rob, like any good tyrant, deserves credit for carefully curating loyalists to help him eliminate defectors like Francesca and Christina early on, leaving him with only those he could control with ease. And loyalists he had. Ometepe all stayed in lockstep, refusing to talk to Zapatera just because Rob told them to. Zapatera went home one by one, and Rob took his zombies to the final six. Boston Rob's worst move in his Survivor career is implementing the buddy system in Survivor Winners at War. A good portion of the Winners at War pre-merge was about gimping Boston Rob without actually taking a direct shot at him. Whether that be Sele voting out Rob's ally Ethan, or Decal voting out Rob's wife Amber and real-life friend Tyson. And yet, Rob was hanging on by the skin of his teeth at Sele because the entire tribe feared what would happen if they tried to vote him out and it didn't work. As a wise man said, if you come at the king, you best not miss. You do not go against the godfather. While Rob was able to successfully avoid elimination in the chaos of a 10-person tribe, that was not the case when everyone was swapped into tribes of five. He, Adam, and Ben from Sele were swapped with Sophie and Sarah from Decal, and at first blush this might sound like a good draw, since Rob has the numbers, but Adam and Ben were probably the two worst people he could have gotten from his original tribe. And after they lose immunity, Rob tries to implement the buddy system again. Look, it was ballsy against clueless newbies. I don't even know what you'd call trying to implement this strategy on a group of winners playing for their second and third times. Nonetheless, the other four members of the tribe agree to abide by the buddy system, and everyone just sits quietly until tribal council. Rob thought he'd pressed pause on the game at a point when he, Adam, and Ben had decided to vote out Sarah. In reality, he paused the game at a time when the other four had already reached a consensus to vote him out. This is one of the only times in his Survivor career when Rob's read was really off. And I think he could have wriggled out of this one if he'd started scrambling and thrown somebody, anybody, under the bus. Instead, he opted for the buddy system. But you need buddies for that to work. Boston Rob's best move across five seasons of Survivor is convincing Lex to keep Amber at the final 10 of Survivor All-Stars. 
By this point in the game, Rob and Amber's flirt mance has turned into a kiss mance, turned into a something else mance, if you ask Rob Sesternino. Boss and Rob and Amber are going to do it. I don't know when, but they're going to do it. They've got the mat, the pillows, everything is in place, and I really wish those two the best of luck. A really weird Final 10 swap sends everyone from Mogo Mogo to Shapara, and everyone from Shapara to Mogo Mogo, except Amber, who stays on Shapara, essentially meaning she's the only person who's actually been swapped. This is very easy pickings for Mogo Mogo leaders Lex and Kathy, who can vote her out and have a clear path to the end by taking themselves, Sheehan, Jerry, and flipping Big Tom at the merge. But after New Shapara loses the immunity challenge, Rob approaches Lex and in 10 words makes his greatest play ever. You take care of her, I'll take care of you. Instead of a borderline guaranteed final five and potentially final two, Lex banks on using his pregame alliance with Rob to get to the end game and incredibly makes the executive tribal decision to vote out a solid number in Jerry just for the possibility of working with Rob in the next round. Well, you can't say Rob isn't magnetic. Credit where credit's due. Amber put in the overtime to save herself as well. Whining and dining Kathy like she's Pete Campbell schmoozing a client. Or maybe she's more of a Ken Cosgrove. I think that's probably the case. With Amber alive at the merge, Rob and Shapara have a 6-3 majority over Mogo Mogo, and Lex learns what exactly happens when you put blind trust in Boston Rob. Some lessons you gotta learn the hard way. <laughs> well, I'm making the deal save Amber and I'm gonna help you later on. You guys didn't really believe that, did you? Come on. Got nothing else for you. To be in the buddy system with me, like and subscribe, and I'll get you more Survivor content just like this. Until next time, don't get idled out.